Thank you and good morning, everybody. Uh, it's very nice to be here. I really appreciate the opportunity. Um, I'm going to talk today about a, a funded uh, organization, uh, funded by the National Science Foundation. Um, the talk might be a little bit different than some of the others that have been in the series. Um, uh, this organization, uh, and there's a set of them in the U.S. Um, that are intended to help build out the ecosystem uh, in the U.S. And we do that in a number of ways. And so I'll tell you about uh, how we were developed, where we came from, and uh, how we focus our efforts at this time. And then I'll uh, be happy to take uh, all your questions uh, in about a half hour, 35 minutes or so. So the National Science Foundation uh, has a big data portfolio. Uh, they fund fundamental research uh, in big data, so in critical techniques and technologies in the big data space. They support education. Uh, one example of that is something they call the research uh, traineeship, the National Research Traineeship. But there are many other kinds of data science uh, education programs uh, and big data education programs that are funded throughout the National Science Foundation. NSF also funds uh, quite a, a, a large range of infrastructure development, so straight infrastructure. It could be networking, uh, could be databasing kinds of services or fundamental developments to connect databases uh, and software development, uh, as well as other sorts of data services. Our uh, Midwest Big Data Hub and the other hubs fit into the fourth area, and that's the partnerships area. Um, we're... Uh, we're really organized and funded to help reduce friction in the big data or data science uh, engagement space uh, and also help reduce uh, barriers to access and use of data and data infrastructures uh, across the US. So there are four hubs in the US. Um, we're clearly the one that's the lightest color there with the triangles and the green dot, the green dots where we're sitting today here in Champaign. Um, in, in the Midwest area. Uh, NSF funded four hubs with a regional focus uh, in, in order to support um, organization of industry, government, non-government organizations, academia, uh, and the civic sector around shared problems at the regional level. So while we certainly do uh, facilitate cross-country kinds of collaborations, uh, there was an interest on the part of NSF to think about how building out the data ecosystem and facilitating collaborations um, could be enhanced and accelerated uh, if we were able to bring some uh, focused resources to regionally, uh, regionally facing problems. So what do we do as the hubs? Um, we, we have a single mission, as I noted, and that is to build and strengthen partnerships uh, to address specifically societal and scientific challenges that eventually will spur economic development across the regions and to accelerate innovation across the big data ecosystem. And we do this in a number of ways. Uh, the, the ideas, the sort of theoretical ideas that we build on is uh, catalysis and acceleration, um, but also to extend uh, the impact of existing uh, investments on the part of the National Science Foundation and other federal agencies' investments in, in big data and data science in the U.S. Um, in the Midwest, we have a particular strategic uh, perspective, and that is that uh, if we focus, uh, at least to some extent, our resources on developing strategic partnerships, so durable partnerships with other organizations that have similar aims in relation to developing the use and access of data to solve problems, uh, that we can, uh, we can develop some um, uh, sustainable models, business models that will let us uh, address those shared aims, but also continue our work uh, beyond uh, the federal funding uh, time limits that we all uh, are going to face at some point around the hubs. Um, we spend a lot of time also growing our network of experts uh, across um, across a number of, of uh, sectors, and that includes domain scientists, data scientists, end user groups, and also technologists and infrastructure developers. We do a lot of matchmaking, uh, and we work on opportunities to bridge gaps between research and practice, uh, and also to build um, services that result in sharing of resources 
and tools and data. So along with funding the hubs, and I'll mention that uh, because it's not apparent here on any of my slides, the, the funding model is fairly sparse for the hubs. Um, we've, we're just in a month or so ending the first three years of hub funding, and all four of the hubs have received on the order of about 1.8 uh, or so uh, million dollars uh, from the National Science Foundation. Uh, now, each of the hubs has had a little bit of funding from either private sources or a couple other agencies, and all four of the hubs have a lot of in-kind support across the academic institutions where we're hosted. Um, but considering the sort of work as we go through, you'll see the, the kinds of work and reach that we have. Um, 1.8, between 1.8 and $2 million isn't a lot of money for the kinds of, of work we're trying to do. Um, so, to layer on that and focus in these particular priority areas across the regions. NSF also, the National Science Foundation, also uh, rolled out a second solicitation for projects um, across the priority areas that they call spoke projects. And in the Midwest, the focal areas or the priority areas in, sec in terms of sectors that we have here are digital agriculture, food, energy, water, smart resilient communities you'll see the others here the health and biomed is predominantly focused on neuroscience and public health transportation um, both from the urban and mobility side but then also rural transportation and cyber physical systems and infrastructure uh, strength uh, and and uh, and health um, and then materials and manufacturing the cross-cutting areas are significant because um, data science education, workforce development, and training, of course, reach across all of these sector areas, uh, and also developing data infrastructure, resources, tools, services, uh, and thinking about the policy and implications for governance, data governance across all these sectors. Those are all shared needs, particularly when it comes to uh, government and industry uh, interactions across these sectors. And we, we try to interface across these um, in a number of ways, and you'll, we'll talk more about that as we move forward. So in addition to matchmaking, um, and thinking about sort of strategic development of, of expertise and experts across the region to be able to leverage that expertise for, for new kinds of projects uh, and engagement. We spend an awful lot of time um, both traveling around the region to, to develop new partners and collaborators um, to build up the membership of the hub, uh, but also because face-to-face, uh, -face, this won't be a surprise, I think, but face-to-face -face meetings helps us with developing partnerships, but it also allows me and uh, the other couple of folks in the hub that do some of this regional um, outreach and, and communication work, it allows us to understand where strengths are at different locations across the region, where we might be able to uh, leverage resources that are not yet part of a network uh, where we can actually understand ideas and uh, growth and, and fo focus of different uh, research centers across the region and be able to start to build up that network uh, to leverage later on. So um, regionally we have, uh, uh, and I'll point out just a couple of statistics in a minute about our region, but at this point our in-region event uh, and visit count is at about 56. It's actually higher than that now. I'm just back from a, quite a long series of, of uh, events over the last few weeks. Um, but these events across the Midwest are um, big data and data science meetings, but they're also domain meetings. So uh, biomed, big data and health sciences, uh, transportation, mobility, um, IoT and manufacturing, uh, and a whole range of others. And uh, we expect to see a lot more dots on this over the next three years. We're doing uh, quite a lot of outreach and you'll see um, uh, so I guess I should point out the states that we're looking at now. This. The Midwest region encompasses these 12 states that you can see, with the exception of Kentucky, which is uh, down as you're facing it in the right-hand corner. Um, so all the rest are in the region. You can see, though, we don't 
we, we have a lack of dots out to the western edge of the hub. Uh, over this next year, I'll be making a number of visits out toward that western edge uh, as we start to bring uh, schools and some industry partners from that edge in, into our region as well, into the partnership. So it's an interesting, some interesting just facts uh, about the region here. Um, you can see that we're part of the Great Lakes region and then up into the St. Lawrence River Valley area. Um, that area constitutes, uh, actually, if we combined it cross-border into Canada with those two provinces, the world's third largest economy, about $6 trillion. Um, 50% of all U.S. Canadian um, bilateral trade uh, is conducted in those two provinces and the Great Lakes region, the, the six states across the Midwest region there and two in the Northeast region. Um, and it's 20% of the world's fresh water. So um, what you're probably thinking now is, well, we have an awful lot of problems like water quality, trade, uh, moving, uh, for example, materials, manufacturing, moving goods back and forth across the border, thinking about food security and those sorts of things. And we do. So uh, we have lots of big data opportunities and we're thinking about that all the time uh, and beginning to build out partnerships, not only across the Midwest region, but uh, with some new collaborators uh, across the Canadian border. So I won't spend much time on this slide here because uh, I'd like to tell you a little bit about some of the projects we're actually engaged in directly, but we do national outreach and leadership in data science and big data as well. Um, the Midwest Hub is engaged in all these spaces. Some of these are National Science Foundation specific workshops that we go in and participate in. Some are at our um, uh, uh, national uh, institutes uh, of research also that are out on the East Coast there. And then we also have a number of national kinds of events that happen across the country in domain spaces that we participate in as well. Uh, um, some of these are also international society conferences. So we're out there all the time trying to build our partnerships, uh, particularly in the, the priority areas. So uh, I mentioned the spoke solicitation. We have uh, right now about nine awards and another $5 million or so that are attached to the hub. That money doesn't come into the hub, but we participate in a number of ways in these projects. But we provide outreach and communication um, uh, services and interactions. We also uh, help uh, build and develop um, access to new resources and, and computational uh, uh, and software services as they may need. Um, so, and you can see that the areas here, they're, they're uh, lined really well with our focal areas, agriculture, the neuroscience network, um, integrative materials design, which is a, a really fantastic pipeline. Uh, of data services and tools to facilitate access and use of uh, fairly large growing data sets in the materials, fundamental materials space. Uh, and they're, they're now at the scale where they're building out some very nice machine learning uh, tools on top of these data sets. Uh, we just uh, brand new funded a uh, uh, new um, water quality uh, system that's going to be around the upper Mississippi River Basin. Uh, and now um, rural bridge uh, infrastructure uh, that's starting out in the, those western spaces we showed on the map a minute ago. So a uh, quick question about the microphone. Are you able to hear me all well? Should I back off or? Yes, good, good. Okay, I saw a couple of nodding heads. So I just wanted to check the mic because uh, I got a little feedback in my own, in the own, my own room here. Okay, so in the digital agriculture space, um, well, let me step back for a minute. So we've got these six focal areas, and um, across those sectors, the data resources uh, and the big data or data science infrastructure is um, developed at varying levels of, uh, um, of maturity, if you will. And the communities themselves, in terms of practice and engagement around data science applications or um, uh, uh, big data applications writ large, and I'll, I'll stop about. I'll, I'll talk about big data in a second from the Midwest Big Data Hub's perspective. But um, the, the point I'm trying to make here is that across the sector areas, the communities have different levels of readiness with respect to engaging around applications of new sorts of tools and services, and so. 
um, the big data hubs engage with these sectors that we're focused on in different ways to help them be able to move forward uh, with respect to um, engaging with the new resources that are being made available. So I just want to stop for a minute and say that when I, when I talk about big data um, with respect to the big data hubs, uh, we mean that in really in a way that's writ large. So beyond just velocity and, uh, and size uh, and scope of data, uh, we don't simply mean the applications of supercomputing uh, resources, like whether it's Blue Waters or uh, or some of our larger cloud systems, like uh, like Jetstream, for example, which is at our partner site, Indiana. Um, uh, we really mean big data in the sense that when researchers uh, or uh, uh, practical users or applied research, whether it's fundamental research or applied research or practical uh, uh, users of data have some sorts of barriers to being able to either collect it, organize it, analyze it, manage it afterwards, uh, be able to um, uh, add, uh, whether it's metadata or other value add kinds of layers, and, and, then, uh, and then be able to publish that or do other kinds of analytics, uh, uh, you know, post, uh, post hoc. Um, so we are considering the kinds of problems at any scale of data, uh, and so sometimes um, big data, can, you know, uh, we run into a, uh, just a language issue there. So I just want to make sure that, that I'm clear about what we're talking about in terms of connectivity. So that leads directly into here. We actually have done the most work at this point in terms of engaging the, agri the digital agriculture uh, space. Um, and by most work, what I mean by that is we have funded, a large funded project. We have some sub projects that have been funded. And we've also done a number of engagements across a whole range of communities around agriculture and food energy water, um, such that we are facilitating workforce development, training, and new kinds of, of uh, data science applications in this space. And so um, the Midwest Big Data Hub, some of the products that have come out of this are um, funded workshops that brought multi-sector uh, communities together to talk about how to collaborate in new ways to be able to break down silos across data pipelines. Uh, so farm to table, for example, in the food space. So agri-food, we've got farm to table problems with uh, moving ag data, then developing products, being able to make decisions at ag farm space, then out to markets, uh, out, out to the um, uh, commercial uh, product delivery spaces, so grocery stores, and then and then to home tables. There are lots of questions and uh, and slack in the system, some slack in the system, some pinch pain points in the system, and how do we bring uh, people together across that ag food production system uh, to help leverage uh, data and data science and big data applications to help um, in the food production and access to food uh, kinds of problem space. Um, but we've also supported travel to meetings that result in either papers or workshop reports. So you can see up here, there's reports we've built out, um, some white papers that go directly to support federal agencies' program development and feedback on programming, but then also papers that come out of workshops. So these are the kinds of, some of the kinds of things that we support. Um, underlying all of this is the fundamental uh, belief that we can facilitate the convening of people across spaces, across institutions, across sectors that may not be funded by other agencies uh, in order to um, accelerate uh, potential science and R&D uh, in these sector spaces using big data and data science applications. So another space uh, I want to just bring up, uh, particularly because of uh, intersections with local community governments, uh, with, um, with the NGO space and uh, local communities, uh, and also data for social good kinds of applications, is our smart and resilient community space. Um, and so I, we launched this last year. It's a focal area that we have now that's sort of uh, akin to a funding a program that we have in the United States called Smart and Connected Communities. Um, 
th- those are uh, very often funded around uh, activities in the urban space in the U.S. A lot of the data for social good uh, and, and metro sciences activities are funded in large urban areas or mid-sized uh, urban spaces. Um, and so we're focused on smaller municipalities, bounded communities, uh, and then also rural communities. And we're doing a bunch of work here, and I'll show an example here. So we had an opportunity to apply for some funding to something called U.S. Ignite, which is building out public-private partnerships around gigabit uh, cities in the U.S. And we got some funding from uh, U.S. Ignite, and we partnered with the city of Champaign and a very large annual student-run hackathon here at Illinois uh, to put together uh, a reverse uh, uh, reverse challenge around um, specific problems that the city of Champaign is interested in solving. One is about microclimates, so being able to get data in from uh, from satellite uh, small satellite weather stations around the around the region to help make decisions uh, during uh, weather events. And the other is in being able to think about planning for wastewater management. Uh, we're having very large growth. Uh, in a couple parts of the city where the density of the population is increasing very rapidly and our uh, wastewater management and uh, flood management uh, is uh, under assault, if you will. And so um, they want some uh, opportunities to think about how data science and some new, um, some new data products and approaches might help them make decisions and plan, uh, uh, facilitate some planning for um, new kinds of approaches to managing the wastewater in the city of Champaign. So this is a really great outcome. Um, we had a number of uh, student teams uh, produce some really great outputs from this uh, hackathon. Um, out of that, we also uh, developed a partnership between the city of Champaign and our local data science initiative here on campus. And so now uh, teams of students are working with um, not only extension groups out through the University of Illinois Ag Extension, but also the city of Champaign uh, to work on additional projects. Um, in the data science and education space, and I'll speed this up just a little bit here, um, but in the data science education training space, I just wanted to mention a few things that we're doing that sort of set us apart from some of the other hubs. Um, so across the hubs, there have been a number of hackathons. We're all, we're all sort of engaged in that and supporting hackathons in different ways um, and facilitating that. Um, a couple of the ways that we are also engaging the students specifically uh, is that um, we, it became pretty clear that there are opportunities for current data science, student-led data science or data-related organizations across campuses. So we have student uh, organizations, undergraduate or graduate, in statistics, in, uh, in data science per se. Um, some are focused on uh, data for social good. Um, some are focused on business analytics. Uh, so we have reached out to those, uh, sort of their, their formal recognized student groups on campuses across the Midwest. We're now also reaching out across the country to provide an opportunity for those student groups to, to participate in webinars, to talk to each other about what their organizations do, how they're structured, um, how they engage either with other students on campus, whether they do training for students on campus, how they engage with industry, whether that's for funding or to find projects to work on directly with uh, industry partners at their local campuses, um, or how they engage uh, with uh, local communities, whether they're uh, non-governmental organizations, civic groups, or um, or the municipal governments uh, to partner with those groups on bringing their expertise in data science or statistics uh, out there uh, to work with the communities. So the goal for us was to have students begin to talk to each other, to begin to, to develop networks of uh, you know, community of practice, but also now students will start to meet each other before they go out into the job market, uh, into the world. Um, uh, they're sharing skills, they're sharing uh, organizational tips on how to raise funds. Um, and so uh, this has been really well received. These webinars are up and available, and uh, and they're available 24-7. So if there are students uh, they are interested, uh, some of these are they're just great talks 
Um, you can see there uh, in the middle is uh, Tim Niekamp. He's from StatCom from the University of uh, Michigan. Um, and so I'll leave that there on the students. Uh, we also run a big student poster session at our annual all hands meeting uh, and that um, that's that's become a, a real point of interest for our industry partners around the Midwest region as well I just want to mention the other thing we run in the summer is the Midwest data summer school for early career faculty uh, that runs every summer for about a week uh, and they bring in uh, they bring in trainers in the big data space from around the country for that uh, they just ran the third one this summer we'll be running this again um, next year I should say, well, you can see there, it's run at Iowa State. Um, uh, that's one, also one of our, our partner uh, sites here in the Midwest. So one of the things that the Big Data Hubs uh, do together is engage jointly in national, uh, national activities. Um, the West Big Data Hub uh, got together with some industry partners and others um, and developed the National Transportation Data Challenge a year ago. It was a six-month event. Uh, the challenge was a series of community problem-solving events, roundtables, some hackathons and demonstrations, uh, tutorials and trainings to build up collaborative data science um, to advance transportation safety. Uh, there were six areas total that they focused on, but in the Midwest, we specifically organized a data hackathon. Um, that hackathon was hosted at the uh, State of Nebraska Transportation Center at the University of Nebraska Lincoln, and that was in partnership with the uh, University of Nebraska Omaha as well. Google uh, uh, sent us some folks to, to mentor that day, uh, provided some data sets as well, and then datascience.com um, uh, came in uh, came in as well um, and provided prizes and some other things. So um, we focused on those two areas: bike and pedestrian safety and weather and emergency response. Uh, the winning team actually got to go to the challenge finale event in Washington, D.C. Uh, so we had a lot of funding and support around this. These are the kinds of things that uh, we do um, together, the hubs do uh, nationally. Um, and we anticipate this coming year, they'll uh, potentially we're working on a, a water data challenge that will be a national event. So we also collaborate on a, a quite a wide range of other funded projects. We provide a number of, uh, of, of kinds of services around these collaborative projects, but I included these here for some specific reasons, just to show sort of the kinds of examples uh, and where we're focused. You'll see there, there's real variation in terms of domain, but you can also see the kinds of value uh, or the, or the, the, the sort of um, Places where we see opportunities to bring value to the data science and big data uh, community and ecosystem by partnering with these different kinds of things. So, specifically, we work uh, together with technologists and infrastructure uh, developers to broaden their access to user communities uh, and their reach in terms of uh, in terms of how they can be successful in uh, in it. So. For example, we might bring expertise into them uh, to sit on advisory committees to help them be as successful as, as they can be. Uh, so you can see there are several in the space specifically for infrastructure. Um, we have some that are pre predominantly around community building and several of those are not up here. We have a, two or three of those we also support specifically in the community building space. Um, in fact, uh, um, the cheese, uh, cyber, the cyber human ecosystem around uh, cybersecurity education, that also is focused uh, to some extent on community building as well, just as an example. So I, I'm happy to answer questions about how we engage uh, further with these um, uh, and sort of how we think about um, uh, when we make selections or how we agree to these kinds of collaborations. I won't spend much time, uh, more time on this right now, but happy to talk about that further uh, as there's interest. I want to talk for just a brief moment on the kinds of partnerships, and then I'll show you some examples of what we're doing uh, specifically. Um, but as I noted very, uh, you know, much earlier uh, when I started speaking, one of the um, strategies that we've really employed here in terms of development of our organization, which is expected to become self-sustaining over time, 
uh, is that we think about strategic partnerships as one pathway to sustainability. And so we work with a number of organizations on different models of partnership. Um, again, there have to be shared aims. Uh, generally, those, those, those organizations with which we partner uh, have um, uh, currently durable, uh, so active funding and durable funding uh, around their aims uh, so that um, when we make commitments uh, to this year, next year, the year after that, we know that we're able to um, follow through on those things and so are they. So just as an example, here are some things that we do. Uh, all four of the hubs have a working group on cyber infrastructure. Uh, this is highly beneficial for opening up um, uh, opportunities for putting in very large new proposals uh, for cyber infrastructure uh, support and sharing across the country. Um, and those proposals go into uh, private foundations, but also the federal government. Um, we have a, a fairly new um, MOU, a Memorandum of Understanding with the Council of the Great Lakes Region. Uh, we expect that that will become a more formal, um, it's formal now in an MOU, but we expect that to become a more formal partnership uh, uh, after this year. We're actually launching some collaborative work with them across this year. We have something, you might have heard of the carpentries. Uh, have people here heard of software and data carpentry? Um, great. So we... Um, we actually have a membership in data carpentry um, and the partnership um, we're working toward having a, a, a different besides a membership a broader a partnership with the carpentries um, and what we do now in terms of that membership is um, our membership is run through uh, one of our other um, I keep mentioning or uh, where we have where we have specific focused activities. So Indiana, University of Michigan, University of North Dakota, and Iowa State University, and here at Illinois. Um, those are the five uh, universities that are part of the funded, National Science Foundation funded Midwest Big Data Hub. We have other partners that are unfunded across uh, the region. Um, but the, so, so the partners, um, uh, have different roles and the data carpentry membership is actually through the U University of North Dakota and so they build out um, a, a bunch of these uh, data carpentry workshops and my office pays to uh, send the, the trainers out to those workshops and uh, University of North Dakota has funding to get um, to get students uh, at those uh, at those trainings across the different states in the Midwest so I'm going to talk very specifically about a partnership we have, the National Data Service. In fact, in the talk last week uh, from Kenton McHenry and uh, Christine Kirkpatrick, um, they may have talked a little bit about this partnership. Um, I'll talk about it from our end uh, very briefly in a minute. And then I want to talk a little bit about our partnership with Microsoft Research. And then I will wrap up. Um, so uh, the National Data Service, um, uh, again, they gave a longer talk last week, and so you can, you can uh, go see their talk specifically. And I know they also talked about the Open Storage Network last week as well, and I'll point to that in a minute. But um, uh, again, they, they will have lots more uh, details on this. But we have a formal agreement also with the National Data Service, uh, which builds out um, data infrastructure and software infrastructure for data applications. Um, we bring Midwest Big Data Hub uh, community members, so users, data users, uh, together with, um, with the NDS uh, software developers uh, to solve some problems in terms of data access and use. So here's a pilot project that, um, so my office, we reached out, we made a call across the region, we had some folks come forward and say, hey, we've got a lot of data, it's sitting in this very scattered sort of set of files. Um, we don't have easy ways to be able to run analytics across that this data. Uh, it'd be really nice to have a sample set of tools um, and or have, you know think about how to organize this data better, not only for our own research team but to support um, uh, student education uh, in our, in our programs. So. So that's what they did. They, they built out, um, they, they moved the data into a, a Mongo database. Uh, they built a, a Jupyter Notebook as, a, as an example of how to engage with the data. And in fact, 
now this uh, source is not only being used by a research team uh, around this um, this uh, physical bridge infrastructure data, but uh, is uh, the basis for a, a dissertation of one of the doctoral students uh, of this research group. Um, the data are also available for public public use as well. So, um, in terms of the Microsoft Research uh, a partnership. Uh, all four hubs negotiated with Microsoft Research uh, about a year and a half ago now um, to, uh, to to build a partnership around access to about $3 million worth of uh, Azure credits. Um, so both store and computation uh, in the Azure cloud system. Um, and so we were able to identify a handful of projects in the Midwest Hub. Um, these projects received uh, close to $100,000 of uh, Azure credits apiece to be able to build out uh, data services and make data available for analytics, um, uh, both to their, their user communities first, but then um, eventually to open up the data beyond their, their immediate research uh, teams. So you'll see on the bottom there, uh, the group is building uh, a vision system that reports yield information for apple orchards using just a uh, video of the crop. Um, with Azure credits, they're, they're working to build um, a convenient uh, set of cloud-based uh, infrastructure for collaborating and processing the images uh, and to provide results and, and uh, improve some of the scalability and accessibility of the system. Uh, they have a distributed team working on using video specifically for um, facilitating the dis uh, decision making for not only for understanding crop yield, but then eventually for decision making on, on uh, uh, harvesting. Uh, in the top is Franco. Franco is, um, you saw, we have one of the spoke awards in the um, neuroscience space. And Franco's got another $100,000 or so worth of uh, Azure credits um, specifically to be able to use for VMs, for Docker in, uh, installed systems, uh, to, um, to build out and test uh, container services uh, for one of the computing resources and workflows across uh, their very large data sets um, uh, across, uh, that's connect on data for neuroscience. So I won't, I won't tell you the whole story here. Um, we've got some details up on our website here, but uh, one is um, around data uh, research data management and training that they've built out into the cloud. That's the C-Train, uh, that's the C-Train group. And then the other is real-time traffic uh, management services. Uh, that group at Iowa State is actually working with the state of, of Iowa uh, to help facilitate real-time management particularly when there's weather-related events uh, to help uh, uh, deal with uh, traffic incidents. So I'm about wrapped up. I want to just uh, sort of talk about these are the kinds of events we have coming up in the fall. Um, some are places where we're engaged directly in providing funding. Um, others are, you can see some of these are training. Uh, I want to point out um, some of the new things we've got going on, and that is that um, we have just launched two working groups here. Uh, these are fairly high-level working groups. They'll only have eight to ten people of, on them. Um, the, uh, the goal of these working groups, one is in cybersecurity and big data. The other is advanced manufacturing. And the goals of these working groups are to spend a year mobilizing uh, the most expert sort of state-of-the-art information to help us um, uh, not only inform the region, on what the state of the art is here, but to identify gaps and opportunities in those sector areas that are of interest to the Midwest region, uh, to write a white paper uh, it, that will help us uh, in strategic planning for how we can engage the community, uh, work with academia industry in the R&D spaces here, and also to help uh, facilitate not only access uh, to computing, but access to data that will help um, drive R&D uh, for these spaces. I'm going to skip that slide, but you'll have that available. The, uh, this is just um, the, the kinds of ways that we facilitate access to our services. Um, as I mentioned, um, this is a brand new funded project, the Open Storage Network. Um, 
here in the Midwest, we actually have two nodes. One is uh, up at uh, uh, one of the uh, regional network services up at Northwestern at the Starlight. Uh, but we've got one right here at NCSA that we'll uh, be launching later. Anyway, there's a much longer talk on the open storage network and uh, its development from last week's um, uh, presentation to you all on the National Data Service and the OSN. So much more detail is available in that talk from last week. Uh, the mission of this um, OSN, though, uh, is to provide low-cost, high-quality, and sustainable distributed storage um, for NSF uh, research, the National Science Foundation research community. It's a demonstration project. It's two years. It'll be two years running. Um, it's not open for business yet. Uh, but we've got a number of use cases we'll be loading up on this. And the goal is to um, build this out, build the governance out, uh, figure out where the gaps are and where um, what we need to do to tune it up to, to, to then build this out uh, to a much larger national network. Okay. We have our all hands coming up. If any of you are stateside come November, we'd love to have you come to the Midwest Big Data Hub All Hands meeting. We'll be in Cleveland. So again, if you're here, we're happy to have you. Uh, you'll be able to find registration information on our website within the next week or so. And thank you very much.